Hi, I'm Gretchen Newman. I write and edit VinoVerve.com. Uh, we've been writing for three years. Uh, it started as a collaboration of my husband and I and a friend of ours who is Rory Gerland, who was the sommelier at David Burke's Prime House in Chicago, and a college friend of mine, Marguerite Barrett, who lives up in Connecticut. And at this point, it's just Marguerite and I <laughs> who are writing. She writes primarily about things in New England that she sees, uh, different wineries. She's done almost every wine on the Connecticut Wine Trail. And I travel around the country looking at different wineries, seeing what is out there that is local because they're not being looked at as much anymore, even though prior to Prohibition they were considered local food products. Beer, wine, and spirits were all local. Um, so we're trying to rediscover the local wine all around us. The things that I've learned have been so varied, just to discover how wine is so infinitely varied, um, how you can move two miles away and have the same grapes expressed in an entirely different fashion, I find utterly fascinating. It's, it's a living thing. It, it, every grape is different, every bottle is different, how they're aged are different when they're shipped different things happen to them and then when you open them how they breathe what you eat them with it's it's all magical and a mystery to me a year from now I would love to see local wine respected in the way that it should be you you can't compare it to wineries from Europe because they don't have 600 years of cultivation history in any given area in the US you don't even have it in California or Washington. But that doesn't mean that those wines are unimportant or what they're doing is unimportant because those are expressions of the terroir that they're in and the people who are producing them and the people who are drinking them. You often find small local wineries in places like Iowa that are producing wines that are for their main customer base. Maybe they're a German population and the Germans traditionally like to sweeter wine, so they largely produce a sweeter wine, but they're excellent sweet wines. Or they've made country wine with fruit, and that was part of their experience in Iowa. It's, a, it's still an important part of the industry, and they shouldn't be neglected just because they're from Illinois or Wisconsin or Ohio, because They've been producing the wines there usually for over a hundred years with the, the chunk of time that Prohibition threw things off. The craziest place I've had a glass of wine, boy, that is probably wine that I made in my own dinette just because I was trying to learn wine from the base up and I thought to understand the things that can go wrong with it, you've almost got to try to do it yourself. So yes, I make it in my dinette and I have a 13-year-old who caps my bottles and I've got a 15-year-old who occasionally tries to do my labels for me but sometimes she's just beyond it because she's 15. Uh, but, but we try to do it as a family and I've tried to teach them how wine is part of a family interaction because that's the way I was raised and the way my husband was raised. So we're trying to bring them into it as well. So <laughs> it's a little silly, but we enjoy it and probably illegal.